Okay, so I've got an alternator from a 2003 Ford Explorer. This vehicle had 266,000 miles on it. This is the original alternator that stopped charging. Uh, I, I replaced it, troubleshot it down to this alternator, replaced it uh, for the owner. And I'm going to take this apart to find out if what's wrong with this is what's wrong with about 90% of the Ford alternators that go bad. And what that is, is the regulator slash brush assembly, which is this area right here. The brushes ride right here on the slip rings. This is the regulator portion of it. And this is a very easy job to do. A lot of times you don't even have to rep uh, remove the alternator from the vehicle. If you can access this back cover and get it off of the alternator uh, without removing it from the vehicle, there's no reason to remove it. Just remove these th three screws right here they're eight millimeter pull this off and then you've got access to your regulator and that's what we're going to do real quick um, so let me get my setup here like I say eight millimeter There's the cover. Now here's the regulator assembly. Here's the slip rings, which is where the, the uh, right here in this bottom one, that's where the brushes ride. Brushes are in this little housing right here. So now we're going to take the regulator off and the brushes out. Now a lot of times you don't even need to go any farther than this to find out if it's worth trying to put a new regulator in it. So if you look, let me get some light here. If you look at this particular one, that bottom slip ring is in pretty rough shape. Um, would definitely at the very minimum need to be cleaned up. The brushes, both brushes look like they're still riding on the areas they're supposed to, the bottom and the, the, this top and bottom slip ring. Let's go ahead and get the regulator off there to take a look. If you take a look and your brush or your slip rings are, are pretty much toast and they're gone, don't, don't spend the $17 to $20 on a new regulator uh, assembly. Uh, but we're going to take this one off and take a look. Let's see, those are Torx. And what size are they? Okay, they're, they're T20 Torx. Okay, three T20 Torx are out. Now all I'm going to do, just lift up. There's the brushes, there's the slip rings. You can see how one's way longer than the other. This one here is really, really worn. I don't know if a piece of debris might have got in between that and really started wearing on it. But you can see how short that particular brush is. And it's in pretty I mean it's it's got a it's got a groove bore into it pretty good. This one here is in pretty decent shape still. Not bad for 266,000 miles for as much brush as still is, is there. So you've got part number on, on these. You just want to get the part number and order the regulator. I'll put some links for some common regulators in the description, but before you do that, make sure that your slip rings are in good shape. The slip rings on this one are in pretty rough shape. Now, if I was a you know, 17, 18 year old kid didn't have no money and I just needed to get out as cheap as possible. I would try to clean those up and I'd order me a $20 regulator and put in it and hope for the best. Um, it probably wouldn't last 266,000 miles again, but even if it got me down the road for a few months or even a couple years, I, I'd be fine with that. But very seldom does the rectifiers go bad. 
Uh, most of the time, even the, the bearings very seldom go bad nowadays. If it still spins free and, and you don't hear any kind of bearing grinding or anything, the bearings are probably fine. And uh, the thing that you need to look at is the, the regulator and brush assembly. I mean, you can clearly see the difference right here. That is in most cases, I swear, 90, at least 90% of the time, this is this ends up being the problem right here. So, uh, and, and again, whenever you get these, you're going to have, so if you notice this hole right here, when you push these brushes in all the way, or at least far enough, you can get like a paper clip or a pen in there. And that goes for, for both of them. So when you when you get one of these, it'll have a pin sticking in this hole. Don't pull that pin out until you get it installed. Now, you can you can still install it without the pin, but it's easier to get it laid in there. Once it's laid in here, you can pull that pin out. Then the brushes will snap out up against the uh, slip rings. So just keep that in mind when you get it. Don't pull that pin out. If you do pull the pin out, it's no big deal. You can get it put back in easy enough. But that's what that pin's all about. And then, of course, to put it back together is uh, just the opposite, the opposite way here. Of course, I'm using a little 3 8 impact, but hand tools will work also and there you go once you get them in make sure it spins free and uh, should be good to go anyway uh, that's about all I had you guys take care